Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Well, hey, Calvary, thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today. My name is Robert. Great to have you tuning in today. I got a question as we start, and that is, what do you do in times of fear or panic? And, and I, I think we've all got different natural responses, and, and we learned in science class that we've got like the fight or flight response that's our default. And I've always loved uh, studying and watching and learning about like first responders, whether it's you know military, uh, those guys going on the front lines in difficult situations, or our police, fire, EMS, those people. And I may follow a couple of those on Instagram and, and like try and analyze their actions. I've always fascinated me because I want to be prepared if I'm ever in a place to help people. But beyond our fight or flight and and how we respond there, I think we also all have natural tendencies. When we're afraid, when we're we're panicking, we've got internal responses of things that we do. And maybe we we get loud and we vocalize it and we just got to process it with people. Maybe we withdraw, we try and seclude ourselves and get away from that situation. Maybe we, we turn to friends and family and say, hey, I need your support, I need help, I need some advice through this. Maybe we turn to old vices and things that are self-destructive and not good for us. We've all got those responses. Um, But there's a a story from the book of Matthew that I'll be sharing today uh, for our passage that I think encourages us to really think differently about where we turn when we're afraid. Uh, And we're going to learn that from the disciples. So Matthew chapter 8, uh, starting in verse 23, we see the disciples are out at sea. Now, most of these guys grew up on the water. Uh, and I want to give you that as a, as a foundation that, that this wasn't their first rodeo out at, on a boat. This wasn't their first time experiencing rough weather on uh, the water. And yet uh, we'll see their response here. So Matthew chapter 8, starting in verse 23, says this. When he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. Behold, there arose a great storm out on the sea, so that the boat was being swamped by the waves, but he was asleep. We'll come back to that. And when they went and woke him, saying, Save us, Lord, we are perishing. And he said to them, Why are you afraid, O you of little faith? And he rose and rebuked the, the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. And the men marveled, saying, What sort of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? Now, I shared that that these people, they had been around, they had experienced storms. They knew what to do when the waters got rough. They knew how to handle the sails. They knew how to to navigate the boat, how to to avoid taking on water. And yet they're panicking. And I kind of picture it as just like they're running around, they're yelling at each other, they're, they're grabbing buckets and trying to bail. And Jesus is asleep. And I've always longed for that level of, of skill and napping. I've not yet achieved it. But, but I think that contrast is so powerful because the disciples are terrified. And yet Jesus was full of peace. He was full of peace knowing that nothing bad was going to happen to him. He was full of peace knowing the power that he possessed. And here's the, here's the thing that I think we need to, to realize. Jesus got up and, and he, he looked at the disciples and they're thinking they're dying And he says, where is your faith? Why are you panicking, oh, you of little faith? Now, this wasn't just some Sunday school, you know, object lesson opportunity, but it's it's him encouraging them to think about the presence that they had. They had the very Son of God and Savior of the world in the boat with him. They had the person who helped speak all of creation into existence. They had the person who has ultimate authority and power over everything. And yet they forgot that. They forgot that that power was sitting right next to them, that he was asleep on a cushion a few feet away from them, and all they had to do was go to him. Now, eventually, they did go to him. They woke him up. They, they, they channeled that panic, that fear, that dread towards him for a solution, and in that, they found it. They were reminded. They got this beautiful visual of the fact that, yes, here is this person who has ultimate authority. He wasn't just a man. He's a son of God and savior of the world. That's why he can speak and the winds and the ocean obey him. But here's, here's what this application is for us. If we believe in Jesus and we believe that he's a son of God and savior of the world, that he did these things that we read about, that he went to the cross and died for us, that he rose three days later. And if we've said, hey, you're my savior, I'm going to follow you. Then we have that power within us. Scripture says that the Holy Spirit comes in us and dwells in us. 
And Romans 8, 11 says that the same power that rose Jesus from the grave is alive in us, which means we have that same power that Jesus used to calm the wind and the waves, the same power that allowed him to resurrect after three days in the tomb. So why are we afraid? When life gets challenging, when when news gets scary, why are we afraid? Because we have that same power within us. Even more so, we know that our destination is heaven. Our eternity is full of hope and promise with Jesus and being able to see and worship him face to face. So why are we afraid? See, today I encourage you to to reflect on the power that, that God has and the fact that if we are followers of Jesus, that same power is available to us. And I pray that that would give you power over the things that cause fear and dread in your life. So you don't have to wonder where to run to, how to fix your problems, how to mitigate the stressors. And said that you just go to Jesus and find your hope and find your peace in him. I hope that you have a great day, Calvary. We'll see you next time.